Look who made it the whole night without a single scare, didn't fly off. <laughs> Yawning. You made it the whole night. You had your whole first night. You did it. You didn't freak out one time. We were even wondering if this morning would freak out just with us coming out in the room and he didn't. Doing good. Day two looking good. that he was eating because it wasn't really healthy. It was more of like all treats. So it wasn't that good for him. So now we're giving him the fresh food. Yay! Yay he's eating it. <laughs> as soon as you put it there, he's like, I'll try this. I know, he's really into it. He likes it. Look at you, you ate everything. <laughs> And this is what's left of his birdie bread. So it was around day three that I started to notice this very discontent behavior from Bean, where he looked like he wanted to go somewhere, get somewhere, fly off, um, but he would not accept a helping hand. Uh, normally when I see this kind of behavior in a bird, I try to figure out where they want to go and take them there. But Bean was not having it. Anytime I tried to offer, he was either lunging or walking away or just completely disinterested. So oftentimes I just left him to his own devices, he would eventually fly, and then he would step up really nicely from wherever he ended up. You want some water? No? Did you eat your breakfast? Half of it. So, he flew over here, but he's like obsessed with my soap. I think it's juice or something. So I thought maybe he's thirsty, but he's not going for the water. Can we come? There we go. Let's go on a new stand today. See if we can do that. Oof. Filming is kind of difficult. Let's go on this one where I can put bowls on each side. Look at you. Going on each stand, no problem now. I think there's only one he hasn't been on. Yeah. There's only one more you haven't been on. Good job. What kind of predicament are you in? You need help? Oh, you got it. Look at you, you little contortionist. <laughs> Good to see you moving around a stand finally. At least he seems comfortable on this one. He's doing better with noises as you can hear because we're having a play date. You want down? You want head scratch? So if I asked him to come off one of my stands, it wasn't happening. If anything, he would just offer for me to give him a head scratch instead, which normally for my own birds, I would see that as giving reinforcement for not stepping up. But in Bean's case, since I'm still establishing a relationship, I didn't see it that way, um, which is why I would in fact head scratch him. I wanted him to know that I was understanding what he was asking of me just as much as he was understanding what I was asking of him. By day four, I got a little bit smarter and I actually started seeing how excited Bean was for breakfast every morning. He loves my seasonal feeding system, which is awesome. Now by this time he was not yet eating the pellets, but he had also learned that he absolutely loves my birdie bread. So I was actually able to use his new healthy diet 
as his reinforcement. Um, literally, instead of giving treats, I was giving him the seasonal feeding system. So in the morning, when his motivation was the highest and he's like, yeah, it's breakfast time, I started using that to get him to step up from certain stands. So for example, if he was on one stand in the corner, I'd ask him to come to me, I'd move him to another stand, give him breakfast on that stand, then I would move him again to give him water on another stand, move him again to give him birdie bread on another stand. So this was a way that I was not only desensitizing him, but also also getting him accustomed to stepping up and using different types of reinforcers. Reinforcements from which stands he liked to be on the most that were his favorites, reinforcements of favorite foods and water and just things that he could get from that particular stand. Um, it was really interesting to use that as my training reinforcement because he wouldn't yet take a treat from me. So it was pretty amazing to use this as literally my training tool or my training treats at this stage. Now the exciting thing is, as I showed you guys day one, he had no interest in toys. By day four, he has a certain play stand that he really, really likes using, and he started demolishing toys and playing with toys, which I was incredibly excited about. He even got so content that he was preening on my stands. So instead of the stands, which started out as incredibly scary and intimidating to him, now he was seeing them as a reinforcement within themselves. He likes to prefer certain ones, and all that jazz and each one has different toys some don't have toys at all some just offer food and water uh, it just it, there's a lot of variables to them and so it's really neat to be able to see him use them all inclusively you have a good night <laughs> you ready for breakfast soon So I just made a discovery, and I think it's why Bean was not switching to pellets. If you see this right here, see these little bite marks? Those weren't there before. I woke up this morning and saw some little plastic pieces on the ground right here where this bag was, and I think he could see it from around the corner, and that's why he kept wanting to come into my master bedroom. And one of the times he made it and started trying to feed himself his old diet. So I think he's been holding out for this stuff. So definitely my bad on keeping it somewhere in view. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to hide that stuff. Now a lot of you may be wondering why I let him roam free, kind of in a sense. And I don't feel like I let him roam free because he, one, he doesn't have the confidence to actually roam anywhere. But just keeping him cageless and having him on the play stands, even when I saw this behavior of him being discontent eventually and him wanting to fly off, and he did fly off quite a bit. Um, and the reason that I did that is so that he could learn to communicate to me. So I understood that he wanted to go somewhere, but by him getting himself there and then not quite making it or being in a weird situation, I was constantly able, able to rescue him out of that situation. He always stepped up really nicely and it just led to me building more positive interactions with him through his own choosing. So it was his decisions that led to our positive interactions because I could constantly get him out of a situation. I could bring him to something he wanted. I could bring something to him that he wanted. Uh, early on when I'm doing diet conversions so heavily, I was making sure to weigh him and track his weight. I didn't want any weight loss during all of this. Um, I also didn't want him to get hurt from his flights, but he's really not capable of that much. He's mostly flying down um, and he's not plummeting like a rock by any means. So all of that seemed really safe to me and I just focused on diet conversion, which when I'm doing that, there's such an abundance of food <laughs> left to the bird that there's no food motivation as far as getting him to work for a treat. So I literally couldn't use treats. That's why I had to get creative and start figuring out what other reinforcements lied around his environment that I could use. Uh, so really interesting stuff there. I thought it was really, really neat um, to basically train a bird not using treats. I actually got to use healthy foods to train beans so far, which has been just amazing and so much fun. Also, when I focus on diet conversion, I kind of let a lot of other things slide just because that's my main focus, that's my foundation. I have to build upon this healthy diet, so that's my number one priority. 
so look who's eating his first treat. He actually just ate part of a walnut for the very first time, which is really exciting. So yeah. Back to fresh food. <laughs> You're eating good today. This is probably the best he's eaten. Day four, he is eating so good. Good job. Just out of natural curiosity. Hey Capri, can you turn that down please? I'm gonna to try to do a training session with B. Just natural curiosity. Okay, I'm kind of losing his interest, so I'm going to end it. Just consider that a first training session for targeting that went successful. The other thing I started to notice with Bean is because I was doing all of this, I tended to be a positive reinforcement. And from early on, he tried to kind of use me as a fear crutch. And so I was very hyper aware that my family would have to play a bigger role. So. Since Dave went out of town, I was able to kind of use Capri with this and test some things and see if he would be receptive to her. He wasn't as receptive as I would have liked. I would have loved for him to be willing to step up on her from when he flew down to various areas, and he just wasn't, and that's okay. Um, hopefully, if I'm ever not an option, he knows that I'm not home, he will choose to step up nicely for her, but we're just not there yet. But I am happy with the progress we did make between his relationship with Capri. You guys know how I always say I can't help but interfere on Dave's project bird. Somebody else can't help but interfere with mine. <laughs> That's awesome, Capri. You've been running me dirt a while. Look at tiny baby feathers. <laughs> In the front? Mm-hmm. It's probably good, okay? He loves it. I know, good job. Mom, can you come help me with him? Is he coming to you? No, I asked him to step up, he just walked away. Oh, okay. I was hoping maybe if he didn't think I was here that he would let you pick him up. He can sit back on you. Is he on you this time or he was on a stand? He is coming to me. Let me see if he'll let you pick him up though. Hey Bean, do you want to come over here and see if Capri can help you? Capri? Can she help? No. no. <laughs> he just me. All right. Can he um, sit with me? Yeah, why don't you try? <laughs> yeah, Capri. Okay. Okay, we'll see if he wants to. You wanna go down there? Okay. Kinda of fell over a little bit. What do you think? Can I pet you? Oh yeah, he's like, oh, do you have that? <laughs> <laughs> he's just the sweetest. <laughs> I'll offer pets whenever. Although I have to say, my wrist gets tired. <laughs> but, He's just so sweet. I love his little feathers. He's so cute. <laughs> Is his eye shut in that side? No. Neither can. 
But sometimes this makes Blueberry tired. <laughs> so I'm just wondering. He likes it. Yeah. You always want to stop petting before they tell you to stop. Like that was perfect. That was super good. You're so sweet. <laughs> Why? Uh, that way they don't feel like they have to tell you to stop. You know what I mean? Yes. Like if they were tired of you petting them, they would feel like they have to do something really obvious to get it you to stop. looks like he wants more. Ask him. What? Oh yeah, he's <laughs> the best. It's really cute. Yeah. This is actually the best hand to pet with and to write with for me. Come on. No. Kind of. He's a bit scared. You okay? I think it's just because I moved. You okay. He's like, where do my pets go? <laughs> do you want more? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I just stopped because I feel like he was scared. So. Yeah, that was a good job reading him. I don't know what he got spooked by. He's kind of easily scared by a lot of stuff. Yeah, maybe he got... Scared of a toy swinging or um, part of a movie, maybe. Mommy, see those little tiny feathers? Mm hmm. Those are my favorite. <laughs> On Cressy, if she'll let me pet her, I'll pet her here and then I'll always go to the little bits. <laughs> they just feel so cute and I love them.